Welcome back to Politics Unplugged. For 20 years, Democratic Congresswoman Diana DeGette has represented Colorado's first congressional district in the Denver metro area. This November, Republican Charles Casper Stockham says he's the candidate to replace her, and Casper Stockham is here with us. Thanks, I am. thanks for joining us. Thank you. Most people watching this probably right now are saying, who the heck is this guy? Exactly. So who are you? Well, I'm a business guy, entrepreneur, small business entrepreneur. I'm a consultant, HR and payroll consultant. I'm a marketer. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. <laughs> so I've got a lot of titles uh, to deal with. And some people will say you're going down a rabbit hole because you're going in a race that for 20 years, mm -hmm. 10 elections, yeah. has gone nowhere for Republicans. Sure, sure. Why risk whatever, why risk trying to be the first Republican to try to do the impossible? Yeah, well, for one, I'm not running as a typical Republican would run. I'm actually running, uh, and my campaign slogan is planting seeds of dignity. Republicans would probably never even lead with that, but I do. Um, I've worked in the community. I've lived in the community. I know what the community needs. I just happen to be Republican, but I still can work in the community and do great things. I just met with the, um, a ministerial alliance in Denver, and we have a lot in common. In fact, the only thing we don't have in common is the initiative behind our name. That's it. What, what was that conversation like? Uh, it was a little frosty because of that initial. However, um, everything I said, they really agreed with. They just didn't feel I could win, How come? just like most people. Well, because, as you said, you know, 20 years um, for her, her um, office, but prior to that was Pat Schroeder for another 20 years. Right. So it's going to take a very unique message going into the community to win, and I believe I have that message. Well, I did, I did some research on at least Diana DeGette's uh, history as representing uh, Congressional District 1. Mm -hmm. Her closest race, and we talked about this before we started recording, you knew this, right. uh, Joe Rogers was her closest right. race that right. was 57 percent to 40 percent sure. when she won her first race in 1996. Yes. Her biggest win was in 2006 when there was no Republican <laughs> opponent. It was a Green Party candidate. Mm -hmm. That was 73% to 18%. I believe it. And since then, the closest was two years ago sure. when she only won by 35%. <laughs> right. Those are staggering numbers to try to challenge. It would be staggering for the average individual. And I'm not really boasting about me personally, but it's just what I'm delivering to the community. 90% of the people I talk to, and I drive for Uber and Lyft at night. Mm -hmm. So I drive my constituents around all night. And I have a campaign magnet sticker on my car. And I, when I pull up, they say, are you really running for Congress? And I said, I sure am. I said, get in. So we go for a little drive. You know, I drive them home or whatever, mm -hmm. five or 10 minutes. By the time I'm done, five or 10 minutes, they're on my side, 90%. What are you telling them? Give them, give them your platform speech. We're talking about um, issues. We're not talking about R&D. We're talking about jobs, homelessness, veterans. How can we improve our community? And by the time I'm done sharing my vision of how we can improve the community, 90 percent say they're going to vote for me. Do they live in District 1? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I'm driving. OK. Yeah. So we've done some research again. Your economic mm -hmm. platform based on the familiar topics of mm -hmm. uh, limiting democracy, cutting taxes, reducing spending. Yeah. Why will that mean something different with you? Well, it's going to mean something different because I'm going into the community. Republicans don't go in. The Democrat Party, in my opinion, have exploited the black and brown community. And the Republican Party has ignored the black and brown community. The Republican Party can go in with business ideas and concepts, workshops, not government programs, but workshops like I'm doing, working with Dr. Daddio and some other business leaders. And we're going to be putting together workshops to teach youth how to how to get a job, how to keep a job, how to excel at that job. And if they can't get a job, we're going to teach them how to start a business. That's something that no party, Democrat or Republican, has really tried to do in the community. Now, I asked this of Arn Van Coney, who's running for U.S. Senate as a, a Green Party candidate. Mm -hmm. Why not try a local race, a state race, and do yeah. those exact same things? That's a good question. See, so this was not my idea to run as a congressperson. I was minding my own business. I had a have a good life, I've got a great wife, great kids, and stuff like that. But I was approached by the Republican Party to run, not the whole party, but an individual in the party. What he said made a little sense to me, and I went home and thought about it and prayed about it, and decided that yes, I believe I can make a difference in the community. What's that like to be recruited? What does that mean to you? That means he approached me. I didn't go to the party and say, hey, I want to run. You know, they came to me. So I'm getting support from the Republican Party, which is another reason why I had to run as a as a Republican. If I ran as a Democrat, I would have gone up against a machine and never even got past square one. If I ran as an independent, I wouldn't have any support. Running as a 
as a as a Republican, I get some support from the Republican Party, which it, which has happened. One other issue about school vouchers you think can improve opportunities for students. It's a hot button issue throughout the state. Right. Why? Why? I mean, that's a very Republican issue. School vouchers. It's, it is, and I tell the Republicans, you have to complete the the thought process when it comes to vouchers. A single parent mother or a single parent father that's trying to get to work and get the kids to school, they don't have the transportation uh, uh, or the ability to have two cars and all this other stuff. So you got to work in some kind of a transportation um, um, benefit into the, into the voucher, okay. whether it's accessor ride or a bus system or transit system, whatever. You've got to show that parent how they can get their kid to, the, to a really great school and also get to work at the same time. Casper Stockham, as we go to break, flash your logo that you've got on oh, your shirt Casper there. Oh, Casper for Colorado. Thanks for joining Thank us. You see that? <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.